Hello everybody, I am Shepels and welcome to the first steps into Acronox. Now this is a guide to basically help all new players basically get into malevolence with the basics such as moving and how to basically play the game from the very very get go. Now this is the third time I've done a first steps into Acronox guide and each time there's been new more more and more new stuff put into it. So this is basically for the Steam release which was just on Friday just gone. So basically there's going to be new stuff in this that wasn't in the previous two versions of the guide. So we're going to get straight stuck into this. So we're going to go for a new game. And here you can choose between different characters. Now there's several variations um, of, of each type of character, like you have your male characters, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you have 9 different male characters, and I believe you have 9 female characters as well, and each, you can choose, you know, between 5 different voices, I usually go for voice 1, and I go with that character, and then you have all your female characters, and they too have, uh, Five I'm your different choices as well. So we're gonna go with my usual, which is um, I'm your voice man. one. We we'll go to begin, and here you type in your your name. Um, you might notice I'm putting in Shepherd instead of Shepels. In the malevolence community, I'm known as Shepherd, so I usually stick with Shepherd for my name in it. Now here you have your choices of permadeath or not. Uh, by default, permadeath isn't activated, so you have to click here if you want a permadeath character. comes up with the message, with permadeath enabled, dying will wipe your save data. You also have your reset achievements, so you can reset your Steam achievements, I believe that is the case there. Um, alternatively, you can generate a random name, a random Acronoxian name, um, as you wish. But again, I'm just going to go with Shepard. Then you click this and the intro basically starts. I'm just going to pause the recording, skip the intro and I'm going to skip all the loading screen and everything just to just to keep the momentum going. So I'm going to just pause this right now and let's get started. Okay, so this is where everybody starts when they start a new game in Malevolence. This is basically called the Edya Annex Holdfast region because the main town here is called Edya Annex Holdfast. So let's just go over the very basics. For a start to move is WASD. W moves forward, S backwards, A moves to the left, D to the right. You can sidestep with Q and E. Like so. Next is I. Press the I key, it'll bring up your inventory, which basically you have your weapons, your armor. This is what every character starts off with which is a few tasty food scraps spell which you click to basically learn you have your armor which we will equip torches which are for dungeons to guide the way in the darkness uh, tasty food scraps basically they regenerate your health very very slightly about 1 20th for each one you eat it just kind of gives you that little bit of extra healing power then you have your small, medium and large health potions. Small heals a quarter of your health, medium does um, half and a large is three quarters. The same applies to the small to large mana potions as well. And basically this is your character, it just shows what you're, what you're currently wearing or have equipped. Next if you press C, it will bring up your character sheet with your name, your character's avatar and basically you have here which is your level when this bar fills up and once it fills up completely you'll be basically at the next level tells you your current armor value how much damage you're doing by melee combat this is your in-game achievements and basically their levels so I, because I've started a new character and um, they're all at zero apart from uh, that one because I just learned a spell and these do not affect your your steam achievements at all. Your steam achievements are completely something different. These are your tr are your six primary stats. Uh, you have strength, dexterity, 
Charisma, Constitution, Intelligence, and Wisdom. Now, strength is basically increases your overall strength. You do more damage the in melee combat the higher it is. Dexterity is your basically your speed, how quick you can move. It affects how easy it is to basically dodge traps. Like the higher it is, the more chance you have at a trap not actually activating should you stand on it. Charisma affects your bartering abilities when it comes to the shops. The higher your charisma, the better prices you get. The lower when buying, the higher when selling. Constitution is your overall health. The higher it is, the more health you gain per level. And also the more damage you absorb through your armor. Um, your intelligence is to do with disarming traps. The higher it is, the easier it is to disarm traps. And wisdom is basically your magic abilities where the higher it is the more damage you do with um, magic and how much you heal with your magic as well. Um, if you press T it'll bring up uh, what time it is, the date and the year. Uh, P basically gives you the option to sleep for two, four or eight hours. The longer you sleep for the higher chance you have of actually being attacked by a monster. So, you know, just generally don't heal any more than you have to. And the likeliness of you being attacked in your sleep is, is pretty slim. This is uh, your spell book. Where all learned spells will appear. I believe you can learn up to 25 at one time. I'm pretty sure it's 25. Um, and basically as as you don't need spells you can forget them and learn new ones and so on and so forth. This is your quest book. You can have up to 25 quests at one time and then once they're completed they will basically go out of your log book which we'll go more into as we go along. Right, so we're going to, the first thing you need to do is talk to this guy here who is Alex the clergyman. Only in the light. The sword has a shadow. And uh, basically he gives you I'm not gonna read all this because it'll just take up more time. But basically you have two choices. You can either stay here in the Edianix Holdfast region, or you can be zapped off to a random location within the world of Akronox. We're gonna stay here because pretty much everything that I need to demonstrate is going to be here. So we'll just stay here for this guide and press enter again. Now here you get a choice depending on what type of character you want to be. You have one the blade which is more of a warrior starting item because you get a new weapon. The shield is a piece of armor so it's kind of classified as a paladin because a pal paladin is more defensive than a warrior would be. The candle is the mage's starting item where you get your first offensive spell which is fireball level 1 and along with that you get two scrolls one of trap disarm and one of trap seeing. Four is the key where you get the likes of um, basically dungeoneering equipment like uh, trap disarming mechanisms and the likes. Then you can also choose option 5 which is a bag of gold or you can basically not ask for his help at all. I'm more of a mage character myself so I'm going to go with option 3, the candle. And we get our first offensive spell. And we're going to head to Adjianix Holdfast and we're going to get ourselves some quests just to Basically, show how the town works and how quests work and things like that. So, as you can see, the waypoint here is pointing in that direction. Now, you might think, well, this is running a little bit slow. Please do not be kind of confused by the fact that it may be running a little. I'm running a slower computer than most people would be in, you know, this day and age. At the end of the day, this computer is about eight years old now, so it will run fast, will run slower. Also, you might look at the same as what they are in the screenshots. The reason being is that I'm playing in low detail mode to speed up the frame rate a bit as well. Um, if you find that your game is running slow, if you go back out to the main menu, you will notice in the top left of the option and also a low detail option, which basically, you should, if you're finding the frame rate really, really slow, um, just use the, the low detail option and it should work fine. 
Um, generally in graveyards and things like that, you find these jars. If you just go up to them, and you can basically loot them. And basically, that's the, that's the entrance to the place, to the dungeon, Shaba Noor, a very infamous dungeon that many have fallen victim to. A unique thing about Malevolence is that when you find a location, you have the option to claim it. And by to claim it, you press F11. Now, at the moment, it won't work for me because I don't actually have the internet turned on at the moment. But if I was to press F11, it would come up stating that I'm either the first person to discover Shobanor, or it'll say this person discovered it first. If you are the first person to discover Shobanor, then, or any dungeon, town, guard tower, anything, um, forever in the world of Akronox, you will be known as that first person to ever claim that location, your name, that actual location. So you just press F11 when you go to a location like that. Now I'm going a little bit off the path here, and there's a reason for it. It's because of a thing called, well, it's a secret stash, basically. There are hidden sort of secret stashes lying around in the world, and I know of one that is just to the east of Shaban Noor. I can see it right in front of me. Now watch as this gem lights up. Now, the red gem has lit up. The red gem basically means that there's a secret stash nearby of some form or another. Generally within the segment that you're in. So we're going to walk up to that. Unfortunately, there's nothing in it. It's different every time you play the game. Sometimes there'll be some stuff in it, sometimes there won't be. Now, as you can see, that's the secret stash. Secret stashes always appear like that, unless, of course, they're a burnt house where they'll appear like big squares like a town wall or something like that and you can loot each of the squares which sometimes happens but again uh, once you've found it the red gem will once again just completely deactivate so when you do keep an eye on on the red gem for secrets for secret stashes the purple means is that you're near a dungeon or a town or something to that degree or a guard tower so that's basically what the two red and purple gem mean on the countryside and then the green lion is closing in on your location. But you'll only get attacked in or if you have or if you rest. Now the reason that this is probably activated now is because Shobanor is right over there in the next segment. So you know like when the purple one does appear it doesn't necessarily mean that the location is in exactly that segment of the map. It's you know, the dungeon could be here, 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 here. It could be anywhere surrounding your current actual segment location. We'll go more into the maps as, as we go along. If you start up the game and you find that you're having maybe a graphical glitch, um, if you go into the configuration before launching the game, just turn off the likes of post-processing, and also turn on it should sort out any graphical glitches that you might be having at the end of the day please remember guys that this game is in beta it is an early access game on steam it is not 100% complete so going to be glitches and, and little things that do need fixing um, so please do have patience um, it will all, all be fixed as the game goes along and as I said, don't mind my friend literally just playing off of an, an old machine. So it is going to be slower than what it would be for most people's computers. So this is Edjanix Holdfast, which is, you know, the, as I said, you can, if you want, you can get whisked off to some random location and just begin your adventure there, or you can stay in Edjanix Holdfast here. So we're going to go in, we're going to click on the door, and we're going to go in. I'm going to pause the recording so that, you know, we're not recording loading screens. So I'll be right back. Alright, so this is Hold Holdfast. So here we've got all pretty much everything that you need when it comes to starting off. You've got your quest kiosk here where you can get your quests. You've got your tavern, temple, magic shop. General Store, Warrior's Guild, Mage's Guild, and Thieves' Guild. And of course, the Blacksmith for all you melee fanatics. 
So the first thing we're going to do is go to the quest kiosk. Quests, and then when you're finished, so hand your quests in here. So at the moment, there are basically, you can get anything between generally three and five quests. It just depends on the region you're in. The more locations in a region, the more quests you're going to get. It just depends how busy the region is. Um, so quests do vary. Um, but for quests, like the Adriatic Holdfast region is pretty, you know, it's got a lot of different locations to explore in that. So let's have a look. Collect. It's a collect, collect quest. Uh, the difficulty is very easy, so let's have a look. To whom it may concern, it's getting quite dangerous to travel lately and I require 10 jealousy blooms quite soon. I need you to seek what I need from you and bring them back to the stall. So basically we need to find 10 jealousy blooms, which are a type of ingredient. And for rewards, we get a choice of 110 gold, a shiny ebony hauberk, which is a curse. And it's got uh, an armor value of 2 with no enchantments. Or two bladderbeer's brews. So basically when we complete the quest, you'll get a choice of basically choosing one of the three of those. So we're going to accept that anyway. The hunt quest is like this, where we need to kill off five goblins. Now this can this can vary. You could uh, get you know kill ten imps, kill three ogres, kill five minotaurs. It could be any of the monsters. It just varies, and it's as to which you actually get. So we're going to accept that. A cleanse quest is where you have to clear out an entire dungeon of monsters, and um, that includes every single floor and killing every single monster on each floor. And the dungeon we're going to be going to is the evil temple of Kava Kufa. And basically, that's our rewards again so we're going to accept that. We've also got another collect quest here which is six vials of sand and we're going to bring that with us as well. And then once you actually complete the quest um, you basically come back here, click on it and um, saying quest complete and you'll get a choice of your three items which would be gold, special uh, item or rare item and you basically choose as to which you want. Next up is the tavern which isn't open at the moment, it's only open from 6pm to 9am unfortunately so we can't go there yet but you can play a game called Goblin Dice there it's like a little bit of a gambling game that you're able to play but it's a little bit addictive in some ways but, you know when when gold is as important as it is in this you don't want to lose too we much. We have what you see so this is the temple. Here you can basically buy various different ingredients uh, along with potions. Now at the moment I don't have an awful lot in the way of gold, but we're going to buy a couple of small potions, uh, like the mana ones. And the rejuvenation potion is basically um, a mixture of both health and mana. So basically it, with one rejuvenation potion it increases both health and, um, and mana. But then when you buy something from a merchant, you can attempt to barter, which lowers the price. It was originally 145, but it's now down to 120. I still don't have that much, so I'm going to basically leave out the health portion and barter again, and then make transaction. That's how you buy. Here you can craft um, potions. There's not an awful lot in there at the moment. I think the only ones that are there at the moment are health potions, mana potions, and bladderbeard brew. But in order to access the craft potions, you need to have at least three ingredients on you. You can also get the free light healing. The sword shines here also. The um, that's basically the Temple of the Blade. Uh, next is the Magic Shop. Now this is where I spend a lot of my time because of I'm mainly a mage. Be careful what you and touch. Here sure we can find you. You have the likes of scrolls for sale, different spells, things like that. Like here you have different um, lightning bolt spells. There's three level ones, there's also level four there. Ghost form, which is basically a form of invisibility, and they sell more potions here as well as various scrolls. What you have you brought me? Sell stuff which basically works the same way, but I'm not going to sell any of my stuff at the moment. 
Um, Enchant is something that hasn't been implemented into the game yet, but will be in the very near future. Find me more tidbits. Next stop is the general store. Now the general store sells all your, you know, your general items, just miscellaneous stuff. Stuff that's basically not much good to you, but they do all. See anything you like? Oh, I've got the wares. Um, if you've as got you can coin. see, he, he sells pretty much all the sort of, you know, stationary stuff. I suppose you could say, along with with the likes of torches and things. And basically, you can sell books and. Let's see what so you have. You know, I can sell that book to him. You're going to put me out of business. There you go. Good day. Next stop. We are watching Wanderer. Warrior Guild. Or Fighter's Guild, I should say. Looking to train? Now, at the moment, we can't join them. We have no use for your type. Come back when you're stronger. Yeah. We're not able to join them yet. In order to join the, the Warriors Guild, you need to you. increase your Slayer achievement to level 3. And then you'll be able to go in here, you'll be able to increase your your strength for a fee. You'll also be able to visit their shop uh, later on in development as the game progresses. You'll be able to get guild quests as well. Then there's the blacksmith. There's also the thieves guild and the uh, mages guild, which basically apply the exact, basically the same as good uh, blade. I can help the mages you with guild. That. You require, I think, it's three spells learned before you can join them. And then the thieves guild. I think you need, um, I think it's 25 dexterity and 25 intelligence to be able to join them. So, you know, to get into the Thieves Guild you need a really rogue type character. Leather, iron, steel, I've got it all. Basically here's your blacksmith. They do sell enchanted weapons and armor from time to time. Um, you'll also notice the comparison arrows. This basically means, when it's the line like that, means that the item is basically the same value of what you're using. The, up, the green arrow means that it's better than what you're currently using and then there's also a red one which means that it's not as good as what you're using and then you have the forge which is another I'll get back to my work, um, feature that is going to be added at a later date there's also other shops that can be found throughout Akronox which aren't necessarily in Hall Holdfast which include the cartographer who you can learn basically you can pay him to mark off uh, locations on your map that save you exploring there's also the bank, which is something that will be in implemented at a later date as well. And then there's also the Averys, which is through fast travel by Griffin, which is not also in this town, but will be in others. And uh, basically you can pay them to travel to different locations within the world. And then you've also got the town portal here, which is when you're in a dungeon you can find portals. And when you activate them, it'll bring you right back here. You can sell your stuff, buy some resupply. And off you go, you go back into the, to the dungeon through here where basically you came out. Now, there's one thing we need to do before we leave here. And we need to go to this dungeon. The evil temple of Kavakufak. Now, what we need to do is we need to ask a civilian, or That's citizen. That's quite a get up you've got How there. can I help? And we'll go, I'm trying to get somewhere. The name of the place. And you don't even have to put in the whole name. It'll basically come up like that. You just press enter. Um, it sounds familiar enough. Let me think. I'm fairly sure I traveled past it before. Here. I'll, ma I'll mark it on your man. I got lucky there in the sense that I found your man straight away. That'll tell me. But um, Some Stay people safe. It's dangerous. Will, will, react, will say this to you. How can I help? They'll say you'll have to ask someone else sorry and they'll give you the name of the actual person who will probably know. Stay safe. So it's dangerous. It's, it's out a cool there. little system that I haven't seen in the game since Daggerfall. Daggerfall did that um, the exact same way. The only other thing left to show is the leaderboard which is here by the door. Now again I'm not connected to the internet so I can't actually use the leaderboard. But you click on that and it shows all of Malevolence's top uh, permadeath characters by level um, 
as of now I think the highest one is still Danbo at about level 105 I think um, and then basically as, as you progress in level um, with a permadeath character you'll slowly find yourself going up up the list as you go along. Well, that's pretty much everything for towns. Our next stop is this dungeon and we're going to go there. We'll probably come across a few others along the way but I'll go into the one that I'm specifically going for with the quest. So I'll be right back. Alright, so let's head on to this dungeon anyway. Now let me explain this map a little bit. This is your immediate map, as I've demonstrated before with the the uh, hidden stashes, and basically just of your current sort of little area, which would be this here. That would be basically it, and maybe a little bit more into just the inside edges of the others around it. And then this is your local area, which covers this spot here. And then that's your world map. Now this here is basically the region that we're currently in, which is the Adrianics Holdfast. That blue line there, if we were to pass that line, we would enter into here, which would be the next tiny, 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 tiny little square right next to that red dot, which is where we currently are at the moment. So that's basically how it works. And towns appear like uh, blue castles, dungeons appear like red skulls, towers are purple towers, and then farms are like um, green windmills or or X's. I always see them as windmills, but they kind of also look like X's in, in a sense as well. That's basically how the, the map works. So each time we pass this here, I'm going to a new world we're entering the next basically area here so that's Adrianic all fast which is now behind us because we've gone out of that segment and into this one now we are heading up to here which is where it was revealed so I'm going to head yeah I'm gonna head east and then we'll go north once I get in line with it in accordance to the map and we're just gonna keep going in action go and of course keep an eye on these as well and you can claim any location within the area like at, at the end of the day any location is claimable isn't as farms because it's not technically a unique location as such um, but any dungeon any guard tower any town is 100% claimable um, but you do have to be the first person to claim it to have your name on that um, Unless, of course, you're like Smeggit who has over 1,000 claims at this stage, which is where the Gazetteer of uh, Smeggit came from, which is an item that you find in dungeons, which basically uh, locations within a small radius of where you're currently located when you use it. Uh, very handy little items to find. Um, monsters drop them and uh, you find them in containers, chests the likes you can get them as quest rewards as well handy especially when you're in a new region and you're not quite sure where to go now there's a farm over here so I'm just going to show you this very briefly how the farm works now a farm you can only go into them at the day because if at night they kind of lock the doors um, because like the monsters roam at night so if it's starting to get dark and you get there in time you can stay the night until early morning and then you can go on yourself on, on your way and uh, you won't be bothered by monsters then also they can reveal the the local area as well which is what I'm going to show now is it actually it's 15 tower I'm just gonna stay the night just in case because I don't want to be attacked anyway. come inside and meet the missus so we're gonna stay the night you don't mind the smell of pigs no, nope, don't mind the smell of pigs at all. So now it'll be early morning, and we're going to ask the You're not from around here, are you? Seconds. There you go. Pay us another visit sometime. And that'll update the map, and he's basically revealed all the locations in this part of the region. Um, 
yeah, the the X's. I sort of, I have a habit of calling them windmills because of they have kind of mills here, and and in the farms. So I kind of like that. So I kind of call them mills. But I suppose green X's would do perfectly fine. There's guard towers along here as well. Guard towers. You can stay there at night as well, and you can resupply as well. Um, now where were we heading? I've kind of lost track of where we were heading now. We're heading up this, up to here. That's where we're going. So I've gone a little bit too far east, but never mind. We'll just go back one segment and head north from here. So the farms are always handy to find because, again, you can use them as both shelter and to reveal locations, which means you don't have to pay a bloody the greedy cartographer um, to necessarily map the area for you. There's another dungeon up there, that's why the old purple gem is lit up. Well, it's not the one that we're heading for. Now, there's also something, and that is the fact that if you're on a quest to go to a dungeon, the difficulty of the quest determines how many floors there are in the dungeon. So, for example, if you get a very easy cleanse quest for Shoban Noor, it appears that there's two dungeon floors. There's only two floors in the dungeon. Well, Shobanor is actually a 10th floor dungeon. So even after you've finished the quest and handed it in, if you wanted to, you could always go back to the dungeon and explore the rest of it. It's just the way that the quests work, so is that it, the actual dungeon is in correspondence with the difficulty level. But once you've finished the quest, you should be able to go back to Shobanor and basically explore the other 10th floor dungeon. So... Do, do bear that in mind when it comes to quests. Generally very easy would be between one and two floor dungeons. Easy would be about three to four. Uh, medium or intermediate would be about six. Hard would be seven or eight. And then very hard would be about ten floors. So the higher the difficulty, the, the further the dungeon. For a dungeon that would normally be a one floor dungeon. Um, if you have a quest that's to cleanse a dungeon that is, um, say, a very ha a very hard difficulty one, and you had to go to a one floor dungeon, it would suddenly it, for the quest it would have ten floors. It's just the way that the generation, and it's it's not a bad thing. I mean, it it works really really well in my own opinion, and um, I I really like the idea. It kind of gives you this sense to to go back and tackle a dungeon again. Now we must be where we are to head. That's it right to the left of us. Alright then. Let's head in there. So, so we're gonna go in here now. Uh basics of combat and just how to use the environment to your advantage as well. So once again I'll be right back. Alright, so we're in the dungeon and already I've got nasties on the way. There's one imp right over there. So I'm gonna light up a torch. Give me some better view distance. And I can also hear other creepy guys around somewhere. Now the green gem basically shows that there's a monster aware of my location. The purple gem means that there's a uh, nasty trap somewhere in this room. We're going to take out the simp, so I'm going to take out my fireball. I'm going to click on fireball, ready to spell, and then to cast, you just press the space bar. There we go. And not dead yet. Now he's dead. And then once an enemy's dead, just click on them and you can can loot what they have on them. So every time when you see a purple gem on you must you should really click in front of you like that. And if the trap is there, it'll allow you to disarm it. Now again, don't mind the frame rate on my computer, because again I'm running an older computer. So the frame rate is going to you know, it's not gonna be as fast as it would be for a lot of people. Um now the purple gem is on again, so let's just have a look and see if we can find this trap. And now there's something else. Okay, the trap is right there. 
The only thing is when an enemy is aware of your location, you can't disarm a trap. Now we're going to sleep to restore my mana. Bring up a men up this menu again, you press the P key. I'm gonna rest for the eight hours. I know there's a risk of me being attacked, but looks like we got away with it this time. Now, this is where the problem is. I can't disarm that trap once the monster's aware of my location. And I'm going to continue to I'm not sure where it is coming from as such. I'm really not sure. Sounds very much like an orc to me. I'm going to go this way. We'll come back to that trap. We'll probably find more. Okay, the red gems just lit up. That means there's a secret door somewhere. It's not there. Aha! There it is. You'll notice a small gap in the secret door like that, which isn't in the rest of the walls. That's how you can identify the secret door. And you just go up to it, click it, and it'll open revealing the way. Sometimes they just lead on to, you know, join on with another part of the dungeon, and there's another bloody trap, and of course there's an enemy nearby, so I can't disarm that either. Okay. It's not very often you get this where you get uh, two bloody traps that are right where there's monsters that are able to be aware of my location. Uh, there's another secret door there. <coughs> so you just gotta be aware of that one. That green gem is lit up, you cannot disarm a trap, even if you find it. So just be aware of that. I have fallen faithfully to, uh, well, I wouldn't say fatally, but I have fallen to my demise into pit traps many a times because of that. And sometimes intend to forget about it and I just head on and just, you know, just do it and then I end up falling in and dying instantly. Now again, please don't worry about the frame rate, that is just because of my computer, it's not the same on pretty much anyone else's. So please bear with me. Also, the fact that I'm recording. Um, also slows it down as well. There is a goblin nearby and I have no idea where it is that he's coming from. Now, since I'm in a room like this, when you're in a room like this and you have a big ass pillar like that in front of you, without a goblin interrupting me, which I'm going to kill him, just click on him to hit them with a melee attack. But I'm a mage. I'm gonna blast these dogs. There you go. Now I generally find myself resting in rooms like this. The reason being is because if I am woken up by a monster I can't beat, I can literally just walk around like so, and he'll follow me, and I can go back down the way I came to the exit of the dungeon. Always keep a clear route between you and the exit of the dungeon. Whether it's doors like that, always keep the doors open because if there's a monster pursuing you and you can't kill it, it'll take a turn to open the door, which means it gives it a chance to smack you in the back of the head. So, when, I come, when it comes to resting, I always make sure I have a clear route to the way out and I have something like a pillar like that to basically move around. It'll help you, as opposed to, you know, if you if I was in a two-way corridor, like, uh, let me say, just say I was here, and a monster attacked me from here. Where do I go? Like, even if there wasn't a dead end there, I'm still going into the unknown, and the chances are there would be another monster just waiting, and eventually they'd surround me, and kill me. So... Use use the rooms and, and the environment to to your advantage when it comes to resting and, and dealing with monsters. Now I'm gonna rest here again, I'd say four hours would nearly do it. This time we're attacked and it's an orc. These guys aren't too bad. Level one fireball you you take them down in about five, five blasts. Mahi. 
Uh, I'm sorry, just for one second, I'm just going to pause the recording because the volume is slightly loud, so I'm just going to turn it down a bit. One second. There we go, that should be better. Anyway, so I've hit him four times. Now, he takes about five blasts at level one to take down an orc. I'm out of mana, and I've got potions, but... So, I, when he's so close to death, and I've got so much health still... Should I really use a potion? Why waste it? I'm just gonna hack him down the rest of the way. Because I don't want to use potions without it being completely necessary. Because I want to keep as much gold as I possibly can. Um, because that potion that I could have used there could be useful in another situation. I only use potions when I really, really have to. Um, like, you need to kind of get to know your enemies and the damage that you're dealing with how much they can take. Like right now, at level 1 with my fireball, there are basically guys who take 3 hits, 4 hits, some take 5, some take more. In this instance, goblins take 3, imps take 4, zombies take about 4, Orcs take five, lizardmen take about six or seven, and then minotaurs and augurs take more. You want to save those potions for the likes of the minotaurs and augurs should you come across them. Because you don't want to be running using potions unnecessarily um, against weaker enemies when you know that you've still got a lot of health and you can still take them out. So well, so you could be saving these potions for when the likes of a Minotaur or an Ogre appears and it's a whole different story altogether. So, learn how the enemies react and you're, you're going to have to adjust it as you go along as well because depending on your gear or your spell or your weapon, armor, etc, etc, it's going to basically change how many hits you can take from them and how many hits they can take from you. So as you level you're going to have to adjust this and you're going to have to always do this through the whole game because otherwise you're going to find yourself sort of wondering well how many more hits do it, does it take to kill this goblin or to kill this imp or this lizardman and you're going to end up using potions when you don't need to and you're going to end up just wasting your money and your potions. So, you know, learn, sort of get to know your enemies and constantly, constantly just keep uh, making adjustments and knowing because it really helps save potions in the long run and potions are, are really invaluable in, in so many ways. <laughs> I'm going to take out this goblin now. And when it comes to, to being a mage, you want to get as much distance between you and your enemy as possible. Now I see another goblin coming along. The reason being is that as a mage, I can blast him before he gets up to me now. So if something's coming from the side of you, um, just keep backing up and eventually it'll it'll get in line with you and then blast it if you're a warrior you can use the wait button here and let it come towards you first and if it reaches you first you'll get the first strike on it like this whilst if you make the move to go up to it first it'll get the first strike on you so make sure that you can use every little thing to get that extra hit in that you didn't already have. So let the monsters come to you. Now I've just completed a quest which is probably one of the hunt ones. Kill five goblins, yeah. So I've completed that, so basically to hand it in, I need to go back to... Well, any town, you don't have to go back to Edionics Hall fast. So we're going to continue on here now at the moment. I can also hold down the right mouse button to, to scroll like that as well. It, it's the way that I use it now. I didn't at first, but I kind of got used to it then and started using it. Now the purple gem is active again. I'm going to try and 
I'm gonna try and show you one of these. There we go. Okay, so this is the traps. And up here you can see I've got this blue gem. And the object of this is to get it down to the bottom without it getting crushed. Which is uh, sometimes easier said than done. So we need to get into that silver slot down here. Which is that. And that disarms the trap completely. Now the problem is, is that some traps have three gems. Some have two, some have one. If all the gems get destroyed, the trap is permanently active until you can unlock it with either a spell or a, a trap disarm mechanism. This is a portal. These are basically the portals I was speaking about earlier and if you use this it'll bring you back to the previous town that you visited. So let me see now. Yeah, it's pretty safe to rest here because I can I can go out either way and walk around, so yeah, I don't have to worry about resting here. So always think before you rest because you just you never know. You don't, you don't want to be getting yourself caught all the time. And, uh, you know, you, you just don't want to be backed into corners or, or anything like that because, you know, if you've got a permadeath character and that happens, it's not nice. Oh boy. Okay, now we're talking big boys. This is the Minotaur. He's the second toughest enemy in the game. The problem with the Minotaur is that he hits harder than the others. Now, at first, you're not really going to take much notice. But when you start leveling up and increasing in level, you're going to start seeing a big difference in these boys. Now these guys are going to take a little bit more, so I'm going to use a large potion here. Because I'm estimating about 7 blasts. Let's see how close I am. No, still not dead. So that was seven. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna munch on a tasty food scrap there for a second. Eight shots. There we go. We got a large potion in place. A large health potion. So I'm gonna rest again. You can also other sort of safe areas to rest is it's just say here there was a door there and it was just one single tiled room if you go into a room like that close the door behind you and rest assuming there's no monster pursuing you you can rest without being um, attacked at all no chance of you being attacked because the door will basically cover you so you, it, it's one another sort of sense of a safe haven to actually rest gonna rest again. I don't like going through dungeons unless I have full health. Um, the reason being is because you've already seen the the red circular things in the floor. They're explosive traps. You step on one of them it's gonna take anything between 75 and 90 percent of your health in one go. If you're not at full health chances are you're gonna burn baby. So you just need to keep your health maximize at all times and I also do it for the sake of in case I run into a bloody ogre or something like that so you know always keep your health and mana reserves as close to full as possible the green ones are basically poison traps which damage you with each turn you take until it wears off you can get antidote potions which are a green potion you'll find them in, in shops sometimes and you'll find them on uh, monsters and in chests and things like that well. So we're gonna have a look in here. Now I'm not going to do this entire dungeon or complete the quest because otherwise I'm going to be here for probably another hour. But what I've pretty much shown you is the basics to malevolence and using them will really help you survive. Um, it is a challenging game to get started in and, and learn the ropes in, but 
Once you really get going in Malevolence, it is a really, really fun game to play. And especially if you like the older um, RPG games, um, like for me, it brings back a lot of memories of Daggerfall because of its massive world. And uh, I, I really, really just love this game to absolute <laughs> There we go. The trap is permanently armed. Um, I'd need a, a trap lock to disarm it now. But um, there's one more thing that I want to show you, and it does cause a tiny bit of confusion. In order to get out of the dungeon, you need to be facing the ladder like this or like this and basically click on the ceiling there and you click yes to leave or no to stay in there um, a lot of people get confused with that and they try they can't quite figure out how to get out it's happened a few times um, I was the same when I first started playing as well I didn't know how to do it either but uh, you just gotta be basically one step away from it and then just click on the actual door and the same goes for ladders to go down deeper into the dungeon as well. Um, and then you have fountains which basically you can drink out of them. Yeah. Some of them poison you like that, like the poison traps do. Um, I was just pressing control there to wait, just to let wear off. Some of them restore your health and, and your mana. You know, the, it's a, a little bit of a gamble with them. But um, I've pretty much shown now all the basics that there is to know about malevolence and it should be enough to get you going and to, to keep you alive at least a little bit longer but just remember to keep adjusting your game plan because as you go up in level enemies are going to get tougher and you need to sort of adjust how many hits it's going to take to take them down um, just so that you know so that you don't waste those potions that you could otherwise have saved. There's the poison trap now. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions or you, you need any, any help at all in, in relation to Malevolence, um, don't be afraid to contact us on the forums. Um, there's the Malevolence forums at www.malevolencegame.com forward slash forum. And you can also leave a question in the video description below. Or there's also the Steam forums as well. Um, where there's, there's myself and Alex who's the developer. And plenty of other guys who will help you in any way possible. Um, just please do remember guys that this game is still in beta so there are going to be a couple of glitches here and there that are not going to be you know you know the game's not going to be 100 percent perfect in in every possible way so please be patient there are updates being constantly released um, to fix any problems that people are having there will be new additional features added into the game as you'll see from the feature list on loading screens and um, yeah so I hope to see you guys on the forums and thank you very much for watching and I hope that this helps you survive that little bit longer in the very brutal lands of Akronox so thank you and have fun